Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at long-term notes. What is the big idea with long-term notes? Simply put, we are looking at long-term debt, long-term loans. Why is that important? Well, I'm sure you know that all companies, at some point, they have to borrow money from the banks. Whatever company you work for, you're going to have to deal with borrowing of money, interest cost, how to compute it, how to present loans on the balance sheet, how to prepare amortization schedule. Also, companies might buy assets by issuing a note. For example, they could buy a truck, a warehouse, a machine, issuing a note. So it's very important to understand the different type of notes. Now, we do have different types of notes. One, we have what's called interest-bearing notes. Interest-bearing notes means the interest is stated or interest-bearing or stated. Now, we also have non-interest-bearing or sometimes it's called zero interest-bearing note. There is no such thing as zero interest-bearing note and we'll talk about this later on. In other words, there is a rate. There is no zero interest-bearing note. And within zero interest-bearing note, sometimes we're going to have to to compute the imputed interest and we'll talk about this later on this is very important when the interest is not reasonable or it's not stated we have to impute the interest also when we have a loan you could only make pay you could make payment for interest only so you could have a loan and they will ask you to make only interest payment then at the end of the life of the loan you make the principal amount or the most common loans that we are all familiar with you make interest plus principle and this is what we are mo mostly familiar with but it doesn't mean that you you may not have a loan where you only pay the interest and you pay the principle all at once now how do we compute the interest usually we use the effective method which is basically the carrying balance of the loan times the market rate now if you don't know what the carrying balance you should know from the prior session i will talk about that later also the straight line could be acceptable could be acceptable if on the exam they told you to use the straight line then use the straight line but i'm going to show you the effective rate method which is the method that companies use the cpa exam examiner use for the exam we're going to value the loan at present value and this is important why well the present value of what the present value of a future interest and principal cash flow simply put this is what a loan looks like so if you have a loan if you borrow money, here's what, you, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make payments. So each one of those dashes is a payment. So let's assume you're going to have to make a payment of $10,000. So each X is $10,000. And at the end of the life of the loan, you're going to have to make maybe a payment of the principal, a million dollars, just for the sake of the figures. So what, you, what we have to do when we record the loan, when we record the loan today, we record the loan at the present value, if these payments are all the same, we treat this as an annuity and the face value or the principal amount will be discounted at single a single factor, present value of a single amount. Just like what we did with bonds, just like what we're going to do in leases, long-term notes receivable as well. In accounting, when we have future cash payments or future cash receipts, here we're dealing with future cash payments. We discount them to the present value. And this is what we do with loans. And we're going to work several examples. So the point I'm trying to make here before I proceed is, guess what? If you are not comfortable or familiar with the time value of money, stop. Go to the time value of money chapter. Get comfortable. Come back and work with notes. But I think you should be able to. Because if you're dealing with long-term notes, it means you already dealt with short-term notes. You already learned about the time value of money. I'm just saying, if that's the case, go to my website to learn about time value of money. The best way to illustrate all these concepts is to work series of examples. Illustrating interest-bearing versus non-interest-bearing. Imputed rate. How to compute the interest. How to state the interest. How to present the loans. How to find the carrying value. So on and so forth. Starting with a simple example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Adam issues a 100 three-year note, 10% at face value to Ryan. The note was issued at face value, so it means the market rate and the 
and the stated rate are the same, add them to make interest payments only. So the deal is, Adam will borrow $100,000 today. Adam will debit cash, credit notes payable, Ryan, borrowed the money from Ryan. Then at the end of every year, Adam will debit interest expense, credit cash for 10,000 or a year later. We're gonna assume December, we're gonna assume for the sake of this example, the loan started at January 1st. Therefore, December 31st or January 1st, you book the interest expense for three years then. At the end of year three, Adam will pay Ryan back the note. The note is gone. We paid off the note. So this is basically, this is first of all, this is an interest bearing note and this is interest only loan. Why interest only? Because Adam was paying only the interest and Adam paid in year three the full amount all at once. Zero interest bearing note. There's no such thing as no interest, and we're gonna emphasize this later on when we talk about the imputed interest. Zero interest bearing, it means the rate is not stated, but we can find out what the rate is, okay? So the borrower would, will receive less cash today than the face amount. So when when does that happen? When, it, when is it a zero interest bearing note? Well, there's a difference between what you have to pay and what you're getting today. So for example, today you will get $9,500 and you'll have to pay us back 10,000. There is no interest rate, but the difference between those two is the amount of interest, which is $500. So the difference between the face amount, 10,000, and the present value, the cash received, is the discount of $500. And basically, what is a discount? Discount is a contra liability, and discount is a future interest. Therefore, it's gonna be amortized to interest expense. Well, again, we saw this when we dealt with bonds. Don't worry, we're gonna deal with this again today. Let's take a look at this example. Adam Company issued three-year, 100,000 zero interest bearing note to Ryan. The implicit rate is 5%. So what would Ryan do? Ryan would want to earn 5%. So Ryan would go to the time value of money table of a single amount because Adam will have to pay this 100,000 all at once. We'll go to three period, 5%, and, add, and Ryan will multiply the 100,000 by 0.86384. And Ryan would give Adam today 86383 and Adam is responsible for paying back 100000 The difference between the cash and the discount is the, um, the cash and the face value. Remember, the cash and the face value, the cash is the present value of the 100000 is the discount. And this is what I was discussing. This is what the discount is. We record it as a discount, and we're going to have to amortize the discount over the life of the loan. So let's go ahead and look at an amortization schedule and to determine the journal entries and to determine the what's gonna happen to the book value of the loan. So this is the carrying value of the loan when we started and the carrying value is the face value of the loan minus any unamortized discount, just like bonds. It's, an, it's a discount minus any unamortized discount. Therefore, we're gonna start with the carrying value of 86,383. Let's try to derive the journal, the journal entries from this table. Again, the carrying value, starting carrying value, 86,683. Well, this is a zero interest bearing note. We, it's at, we, we implied it's at 5%. Adam will make no payment. Then what's going to happen is this. Although we're not making payment, we still have to record the interest. How do we compute the interest expense? Well, the interest expense is the carrying value of the note at the beginning of the period, which happens to be 86,383 times the interest rate that we are imputing 5%. So the interest is 4,319. We're gonna debit interest expense 4,319, credit discount on notes 4,319. So here's what, what's happening to the discount. We have this discount amount here. We started at 13,617, it's a debit. We started at 13,617 and now we credited this amount 4,319. So what we're doing is we are transferring this discount into expense. So we are reducing the discount and in increasing the expense. As we reduce the discount, hopefully you remember from the bond chapter, the carrying value of the bond goes up. So as we reduce the discount, the discount goes from 13,617 minus 4,319. The discount now is 9,000 298. This is the, the discount that we have unamortized. Now the carrying value becomes the carrying value becomes nine. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the 
this is the amount of the discount the carrying value becomes 90,000 90,702 the carrying value becomes this so now we have 100,000 minus the remaining unamortized discount and notice what's going to happen for year two the interest expense would repeat itself 4,535 4,535 and for and again the bond carrying value will go up and notice interest expense is going up because the bond carrying value goes up and for year three interest is 4,763 and we amortize of the discount 4,763 so notice what's happening to the discount the full amount is eventually amortized it's basically the full amount of the discount is eventually amortized that went from discount to interest expense now it's also important to know how to present the note on the financial statements so on the financial statements which is specifically the balance sheet we still show the note at face value 100,000 then we subtract the discount then the note note net of the discount is 90,702 so at the end of year one because on the CP exam they ask you these questions a lot what is shown on the balance sheet this is how we show the note Sometimes we just show it net of discount and we'll show only the amount. We don't show the discount. We may show it in the notes of the financial statements. Let's take a look at another example. And now it's an interest bearing note. Assume Adam issued for cash 100,000 three year note bearing in bearing 4%. So the note itself is bearing 4%. The market rate of interest is 5%. So Adam is paying four, but the true rate should be five. So what's going to happen is this. Ryan knows this. So what Ryan's going to do, Ryan's going to tell Adam, look, I'm willing to give you the money. I'm willing to give you the money now. You'll pay me 4%, but I cannot give you the full amount because the prevailing interest rate is 5%. So for me to lend you the money, I have to discount this note at 5%, but you're going to pay me 4% in interest. How do we discount a note? Basically here, we're going to look at the present value, basically a review of the present value of money. Well, again, the note is composed of two things, of payments. So Adam will make a payments throughout the loan. Then they will make large payment at the end as the face value. So Ryan will, this is the face value. This is 100,000. So Ryan will discount the 100,000 at 5% for three periods and the, uh, I'm sorry, this is the annuity table. This is the present value of a, of a single amount, three periods, 5%, and they will discount it at 0.86384. So they will take this 100,000 and it's worth today 86,384. Then Adam, I'm sorry, then Ryan will discount the payments and the payments are three payments of how much what's the payment the payment is four thousand dollar because adam will be paying four percent ryan will take this payment four thousand will go to the annuity table make sure you're going to the proper table three payments at five percent and the factor is 2.7235 it's worth ten thousand ten thousand 893 just like a bond now we add those two figures together and we find out that the loan is the loan that ryan's going to give out today 97 277 in cash but ryan would receive 100,000. let's go ahead and look at the journal entry adam would receive 92,277 in cash however adam is responsible for paying back in total 100,000 dollars as notes payable the difference between the cash and the notes payable you guessed it. It's the dis discount. Discount on notes payable. Remember, discount on notes payable is a contra liability. Therefore, it takes a debit balance. Now, also bear in mind, this is an interest bearing note. It means Adam will be making a payment of $4,000. So here's the table that we're going to be working with. So Adam's going to make $4,000 payment. The starting value of the note is $100,000 face value minus 2723 which will give us 97277 now we're going to start to take a look at the end of year one okay so we looked at the carrying value 97277 at the end of year one we're going to take the face value of the note times five percent and that's going to give us interest expense of four thousand 
$864. Adam is paying only $4,000. Now we're starting to amortize the, the note. So Adam will pay $4,000 in cash, and Adam would record an additional $864. Why the $864? Because the interest expense, the total interest expense should be $4,864. This is the total interest expense. $4,000 of this amount is cash. $4,000, let me do it below here. So the interest expense is $4,864. I'm going to break it down into two entries. $4,000 is cash and $864 is discount. So the cash is $4,000. The $864 is the discount. Or I can combine those two entries. So basically, I would say, and this is what I'm saying, this entry is the same as those two entries. Okay, just combine them. I just wanted to show you that the interest expense here is composed of two things. What Adam pays in cash plus the discount that we're, we're amortizing. Remember, we have a discount of $2,723 that we're going to discount. And as we discount, as we discounted 864, the carrying value of the note, look, look what's gonna happen. We went from 2,000 for the uh, an amortized discount. We were at 2,723. And after the first payment, and after the first payment, the discount went down to 1589. Now the carrying value is 100,000 minus 15, 1859. The new carrying value is 98,142. And again, at the end of the life of the loan, the whole discount is amortized. The note goes back to the face value. The note will go back to the face value. Let's take a look at what we called imputed interest. What is imputed interest? Imputed interest is needed when we have an exchange and there is no interest rate or the interest rate is unreasonable. So we we, we never we assume that no there's no interest free loan. But once there is a loan interest is involved. Okay? So when a company exchange a note for an asset, we assume that there, that the stated rate that the stated rate that they have in the deal is reasonable. Unless there is no stated rate. If there's no stated rate, we have to find out what, what the implied or imputed rate is, or if the stated rate is unreasonable. So basically they give you either a very high or very low. It's unreasonable. Or if we find or, or, or if we find that there's a large discrepancy between the note face value and the asset. So you're buying you are buying a, a machinery and the cost of the machinery is uh, ten thousand dollar and we have a loan for $35,000. Well, that's unreasonable. Okay? That's unreasonable. A loan for that machine of $35,000. Something's not right. So there's a large discrepancy between the two. And on the CPA exam, they give you those hints when you have to use the implied, implied when you have to use the implied rate. Now, what, what rate do you use? So if, if, if that's the case, if there's no interest rate, the stated rate is unreasonable, or there's a large discrepancy between the asset and the loan, what do we have to do? Well, what do you have to do is determine the true value of the, of the goods and services. Well, let's go back to that machine. If the machine is, if the machine is worth 10,000 and the loan is 12,000, well, we can imply that there's an interest of 2,000 or if the, or if the loan is 10, and the machine is worth eight or the machine is worth nine, we imply it's a thousand. So once we know the value of the goods and the service, the difference between that and the face value should be interest and hopefully it's reasonable. Or if we don't know the fair value of the asset or the service or the goods that we are purchasing, we'll try to find the fair value of the note. If we don't know the fair value of one and two, then we have to impute a rate that's that's similar to sim to similar instrument with what with what we are dealing with. Simply put, we ask ourselves if this buyer of the asset, if this issuer of the note, goes to the bank today and wants to borrow money, how much will the bank charge them? Well, if that's how much they charge them, ten, eight, seven, six, that's the prevailing interest rate for that loan. So it doesn't matter what they state, if it's unreasonable, we have to assume what would happen if they went to the bank to borrow money. The best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example. On December 31st, X1, Adam issued a promissory note to Ryan Consulting Services for services provided during X1. The note has a face value of 80,000. So Adam will have to pay 80,000. A due date of December 31st, December 31st, year X3. So this is year um, so it's going to be year two and year three, two years, and bears a stated interest rate of 1%. Well, 
payable at the end of each year. Well, we're going to determine that 1% is not, is not a reasonable rate. Okay? So Adam cannot determine the fair value of the consulting service for Ryan. So that's what they agreed on. But really, so if this is 80000 how much is really interest and how much is really for consulting services? We don't know. So we don't, Because we don't know how much is consulting services. We're going to assume we cannot determine the value. Also, we cannot determine the, the if we want to sell this note, we can. there is no market, market for that note. Also, what we know, if Adam needs to borrow the money from the bank to pay Ryan, Adam will be charged 10% based on his credit rating and the absence of collateral. So what we know, though, if Adam needs to pay Ryan an amount of money today, let's assume 60, 70, 80,000, goes to the bank, the bank will charge Adam 10%. Well, what do we know then? What do we do? We assume that the rate is 10% because we don't know the fair value of the goods or the services. The note itself, there is no value for the note. And if one and two are not known, we impute a rate that's that's pre, a prevailing rate, the similar instrument. The most similar instrument is what happened if Adam goes to the bank and try to borrow money? The bank will charge you 10%. Therefore, if this is an $80,000 loan, we will discount this at 10% for two years and will separate the interest component from the principal component. Then we work with the loan, just we work with the previous loan. Now, this situation is very common in the real world. I'll tell you how. When, when you have owners of companies borrowing or lending money from their company, and this happens a lot, this happens a lot in the real world when you have small, small or medium-sized businesses where the owner takes a loan out of their company, they have to charge themselves interest or they lend the company money, then they have interest revenue and the company will have an interest expense. So this is very common in the real world. This reminds me of tax time when I was in practice. This happens a lot.